Welcome everyone to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim DeRamo. I have a special guest today who I'll introduce in a moment. I am really excited to have you here live. And for those of you who are listening um, to the recording, I really invite your comments today because today's topic is more, sort of out of the realm of where I've gone in medicine, but very much within the realm of what I'm doing in mind body health and uh, supporting the body and healing itself. So so I'm going to share a little bit of a backstory before I introduce Dr. Ellie Phillips. I have um, always taken great care of my body, taking great care of my health. And when I met my husband, he's like meticulous about his teeth. So he would go to the dentist like every few months or every couple of months. And I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. So I started going a little bit more frequently. And in the last maybe two years, he convinced me to go even more frequently. Like I was going quarterly. Um, and I noticed there was like more film on my teeth. I felt like I needed to go to the dentist. Like it was like, ooh, I got to go to the dentist. My teeth don't feel clean. And then a little light bulb went off and I was like, wait a minute, that's weird. I'm going to the dentist more frequently, but I more frequently feel like I need to go to the dentist. I thought, this is very strange. What is going on in my mouth? Now, in my medical training, we had very little education about dental. It's like that's over there and we have everything else in the body. Uh, my dad, however, was a very prominent oral surgeon. He was a dentist that taught at the dental school. I went with him to the annual Yankee Dental Conference. That was a very prominent dental conference in Boston. Um, he was a speaker at that conference. I actually considered dental school before deciding to go to medical school. So I was a little more versed with this. And so when this happened, I began looking at things, asking questions. And as those of you who know me understand, um, when we start asking questions, the universe will answer. And I found this amazing woman, Dr. Ellie Phillips, who really specifically answered the exact question I was asking and changed the entire way I do my dental health and the way I understand. Now, the premise of our health really does start in your mouth, whether it's you know, the words you speak. I am powerful and healthy. The universe is on my side. What else is possible? That's going to actually create your physiology. That's going to affect your microbiome. That's going to affect the chemicals that are in your body. But also uh, physically, our digestion begins in the mouth. When I studied functional medicine, we learned a ton about the gut microbiome being a major governing system for all of the health throughout the body. But guess what I found is that your mouth microbiome supersedes that gut microbiome. And this put together a whole lot for me as a doctor who's individually investigating what supports the body in healing uh, as a mom, as just a, a woman wanting to take care of my health. And so really understanding how to cultivate a good, healthy dental microbiome and assist the body in healing itself. My teeth now, since starting Dr. Ellie's program, just, oh, maybe a couple months ago, they feel clean every day. They feel like I've just gone to the dentist throughout the day, all day, every day. I no longer wake up in the morning with a mucky mouth feeling like, ew, gross, I've got a brush. Um, I have cleared up, you know, when I would floss, it'd be like this gunky, junky, like, oh, gross, kind of foul in between the teeth. That is not there anymore. And I'm not even flossing. Um, and I've put my whole family on the protocol as well. And we have some really good examples and stories to share throughout. So Dr. Ellie Phillips was trained in UK, uh, but she has practiced in three different countries in the practice of dentistry. She is a specialist in pediatric dentistry, in geriatric dentistry, which is the older people, um, and also in cosmetic dentistry. So what makes the teeth look white and bright and stay healthy? Um, she's also a mom who has tested, tried and tested these techniques in her five kids, which I think is pretty amazing in and of itself, and gotten them. When I watched your first video, it was like, my kids have never flossed their teeth. No one has any cavities. I haven't flossed my teeth in 40 years. I was like, this is fascinating. So this is a woman really who's dedicated her medical career to assisting the body in healing itself and giving this, making this accessible for everyone 
to take part in. So I am so excited to welcome <laughs> Dr. Ellie Phillips. Well, thank you, Dr. Kim. It's so exciting to be here. My, my mission truly has been always to share what I discovered. It was a discovery that began actually a long time ago. I graduated 1970, so it was a very different world back then. And uh, since it began with a few, it was a prenatal clinic, teaching with a slide carousel and a projector screen. And then many, many years in libraries with two or three people, wherever I could find somebody with an ear to listen, I would teach them. There are probably people out there in the world who were on an airplane next to me or somewhere in, in, a, in a line for a bank deposit or whatever back in the day. And then I started doing seminars in ballrooms and now the internet is just so amazing because I can reach so many people, but there are now so many questions and, you know, I get people in other countries wanting that I, and I, I have to catch up with some of, some of it. I don't have every answer to everything, but we're working on it. So <laughs> it's been a most exciting ride. And really in the last 10 years, when most people, most of my peers have been retiring, I've been gearing up and uh, doing more than I've ever done before. So it's, it's very exciting. Yeah, I think let's start with that. The way you've been inclined to think outside the box, to think independently rather than thinking institutionally and what you've begun to see in the dental field, just like what I've begun to see in the medical field about the indoctrination of we have to do it this way. This is the right thing and not really being open to people considering other questions, other approaches. Um, I know you said you got pulled off the podium a couple of times and like replaced with someone who would tell people to do what the ADA Absolutely. is touting is the right way. Um, why don't you speak about that? Like when you first started to see that some of the foundational principles we're taught in medicine and dentistry are just not true. Well, it all began, as I say, I, I was lucky because I began my career in Switzerland. I, I graduated from dental school and then I could, began in a country where dentists were paid by the hour. So I had a flat rate charge and the bigger the filling, the larger the co-payment of the patient. So the patient was on my side because I always wanted to save people from needing a filling, from needing dental work. I'm not in this to incur pain or suffering on anyone. And I saw my brother suffer terribly at the dentist. So I became a dentist with that very naive mission of saving people's teeth and helping them. And I landed it by pure chance in Switzerland where that was the goal. We fixed teeth as needed. We extracted teeth as needed, of course, you know, but the goal was prevention. And I was taught that ending meals with a tooth protective food was the key. And it was that simple. And they explained the chemistry why, which we can go into in a minute. But, but that was very simple and it seemed to work incredibly well. Fast forward, I went to England later in my career, opened my own dental office. And again, I was the queen of my dental office. So I did the same principles. I had people pay by the hour. If you had a family of six that were using principles that I was teaching them that worked, the whole party of six, these I, I had a coffee table and chairs in my operatory. And I'd have one after the other of the children and the adults in and out of my chair. And I could get a whole family of six in and out in half an hour if they all were healthy and didn't need x-rays and didn't need fillings and the family's delighted. I get paid my flat rate. Nobody ever canceled. I had people come on their birthdays because they were so happy. <laughs> when you don't need any treatment, why would you care? You just go and have a checkup. And I didn't take x-rays every six months. I took them when they were necessary. And I thought this is how everybody did it. And fast forward then, um, because of a domestic reason, I was following an ex-husband with my children to America. Um, I ended up at living, moving to America, having to go back through dental school wow. process again. And this was after having all this experience and realizing that how I had practiced dentistry was so different from the way dentistry in America was taught. One example, in Switzerland, we gave people, if they had a tooth being extracted, we would give them uh, fresh pineapple and yogurt uh, for a week before and a week after to, to promote healing. 
And when I started telling people at the University of Rochester this in 1980, you know, they look at me as if I'm dropped from the ceiling. Um, now, if you look up pineapple, you realize there's bromelain and vitamin A, K, C, and yogurt with the probiotic. It was a, a wonderful thing to have your patient take a little bit for a week before and a week after, and it does speed healing. I mean, there it's the basis on which a lot of uh, cosmetic dentists use bromelain today for skin healing. So these were the things, and nobody had ever heard of ending a meal with a tooth protective food. What's that about, Ellie? You know, so I had to then become a little bit more scientific. I had to really determine why did the things I was saying work. I had to look up, and the good news was. <laughs> not initially, but by the time I got to um, kind of the 2000s, I had the internet. But prior to that, I had at my disposal in Rochester, the Mina Library, which is a, one of the best medical libraries in the country. And, you know, we can talk about fluoride if you want to go down that road. But I had to discover why fluoride works and why fluoride is dangerous and I had this resource, which was unique. I happened to be there and I could go to this library and I did a lot of my study work, understanding the biochemistry of the mouth over 10 years of being in practice. And it's so interesting when you, you do that after you have experience. And I had had a lot of experience with very high decay rate patients, a lot of gum disease patients. And now I could understand more about why did they have these problems and what was I doing that was solving them? And I think mainly the ending the meal with a tooth protective food worked in Switzerland better than it worked in America. I had to, to figure out why this was is because people in Switzerland didn't have to go cups. Nobody ever took a drink to go. If you had a coffee, you sat in a cafe and drank it. And then you walked or went wherever you were going you weren't constantly sipping and snacking and eating. And that is one of the things I really, really believe is damaging America's teeth tremendously. And I'm trying to figure out how we mesh together this idea of intermittent fasting between meals with people's desire to sip water constantly. Um, I think there's a way to do this if you want to people throw these questions at me. Well, what about hydration? But the thing is, the whole, what I want to talk about today, I'm going to stop in a second, but saliva, the liquid in our mouth, is your healing liquid, period. I can go home now. If you know that, you give your mouth enough time with your saliva, and you look after your saliva by sleeping, eating, exercise, diet, nutrition, digestive health, and allow your teeth to interact with your saliva, your teeth will be better. And if you know a bit more about it, you can maximize that. So that's, okay. that's my wow. story. That's my story. And that's sort of in a nutshell how I came to where I am today. It, it, it was an up and down and butting heads, yes, with dentists who believe you should floss, who've never talked about saliva, who have no idea that... They, they, they're busy selling nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste. I'd rather you interact with your own saliva. It's free anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to start. First of all, I want to ask this for, for whoever is attending live. And I know most people are listening to the recording, but uh, you'll also chime in on your comments. Who has ever had a cavity? Uh, and who has had a cavity filled? I myself had some cavities along my life, not a lot. Um, but when I started more studying this and realizing, you know, years back that uh, the root of heart disease starts at the mouth, the root of autoimmune disease starts at the mouth, the root of um, inflammatory diseases, most diseases people are suffering from, like there's 93% of adults have some sort of inflammatory metabolic illness, a chronic metabolic illness. 
um, actually the, the signs of this and the causes of this start in the mouth because of the inflammation that's happening, the bacteria entering, the poor care, the lack of uh, protection of a biofilm that we're not preserving this protective layer um, makes us so much more susceptible and that we can do things in the mouth that help prevent those long-term downstream metabolic uh, diseases. And that in fact, dental caries, which is cavities, is the number one most prominent and most prevalent disease. How many of you have thought of cavities are a disease? No, they're just something that happens to everybody. It's just part of life. Well, this isn't actually true. In fact, in the past, um, you know, thousands of years ago, there was no need for dentists because of the diet we were eating. We were eating a totally different diet that didn't have processed, refined foods in it, um, where the mouth had to work in a certain way and the mouth and head, the cranium would be formed differently. Um, so I thought this was fascinating because the mineralization of teeth allowed them to be preserved for millions and millions of years. We dig up these fossils and the teeth are are pristine and are preserved. But in today's current society, we're having, people are having a tough time preserving them for one lifetime. Like how many of you know a grandparent or an old elderly person who has dentures or has, you know, teeth removed or implants or, you know, fill in the blank with all the dental problems, uh, periodontal disease, gingivitis, and some of us not so old have been developing those problems. So it's not really meant to be that way. And so um, I, I wanted to learn more and you could speak more, Dr. Ellie, about um, what kinds of preventative things, because, you know, you'd think the field of dentistry would be the holders for this. Hey, if you eat this way and if you do this thing, rather than come in when you have a problem and we'll fill it and now you're good to go. And there's no education and there's no prevention. So people don't realize how much we can govern our dental health and the health of our body. So what would you say, uh, ending the meals with a teeth protective food, which I definitely want to talk about and what you have found there. Um, what other things can we do to prevent and to reverse? Because I've also seen all the data of reversing recession, gingivitis, periodontitis, Dental disease, um, you know, and, and cavities. Yeah. Well, yes, and and I think it's important to know there are two kinds of disease, and there is periodontal pathogens, which are the ones that cause all this inflammation that are connected with, uh, you know, heart disease, risk for stroke, arthritis, and so on. And then there's caries, and I think let's begin with caries because you were talking about how many people suffer with cavities, the incidence of caries in infants, in children under the age of four is astounding. If you look up early childhood caries, known as ECC, this is a pandemic worldwide. Now I want to tell you about a study that was done with xylitol. Now I am a huge fan of xylitol. I don't know, we didn't mention that, but I have been a fan of xylitol. I worked under a professor who did these studies. I then wanted to do studies. The reason that they're not talked about in America is because these studies were not done in America. So I volunteered as the clinic director at the Eastman Dental Center to do these studies, to redo them in America at the University of Rochester as faculty. And every year I put in an application to do the study, it was turned down. And after several years, I asked the head of the department, what else can I do here to get my study approved? I was told, Ellie, there's no money in this. Nobody is ever going to approve this study. And that's what you got to realize. And I didn't realize that the only people who fund studies today, this was different years ago, but today your study doesn't get funded unless you're making money for somebody. You can't get the, the, the funding. So... That's when I, just so you know the backstory, I started a xylitol company. I took my 401k out of the university. I quit my job and I started a xylitol company and went into private practice with a friend of mine because I could no longer work as part of a university that wouldn't do something. And, I, and the study I wanted to do showed that if you gave xylitol to a pregnant woman in her third trimester, Think about the dates here. So the woman has xylitol 
the equivalent of six grams a day. That would be about a teaspoon of xylitol if it was in a granular form. This, however, was divided up as the ending to each meal and snack throughout the day. Her plaque levels, the plaque that is the, the former of gingivitis, of bleeding gums, of cavities, these women had 100% plaque levels. And as they consumed this teaspoon of xylitol split up throughout the day, the plaque levels were seen and measured to be reducing. And by the time they had been on this regime for six months, these pregnant women who had now given birth, right? They, they are now three with a three month old, their plaque levels are 98% gone. In other words, they are at 2%. We all have about a 2%, even people with healthy mouths, no cavities. There are always a mix of bacteria in your mouth. Even though I've been eating xylitol for 40 plus years, I probably have a few of these streptococcus mutans and other plaque forming bacteria just visiting through. They just go through in and out. There's never plaque forming in my mouth, but the, the bacteria can be measured usually to about 2%. So that was where these women were at six months. Their babies that were born started to grow teeth at six months. That's the usual age for the eruption of baby teeth. And if you think about what was happening, as baby teeth erupt, and there are only certain bacteria that live on teeth, and plaque bacteria can only reproduce on teeth. That's why when they're floating in saliva, they're no big deal. If they get access to a clean tooth surface, they have these little sticky pads that they make from sugars, and they stick to your teeth. And it's on your teeth that they reproduce and grow plaque. Well, the babies who had mothers who had cleaned basically their mouths from plaque didn't develop plaque, didn't therefore develop cavities. And when the researchers kept an eye on these children as they grew, they went back. It was all done in, in South America. They went back and at six years old, these children had 85% less cavities than the rest of the control population. I mean, this is outstanding. If, you're, if you can reduce cavities without touching the children, there was no dentistry, no fluoride, no nothing, just mothers kissing their babies and transferring in their saliva, which you do, whether you like it or not, that's what you do. So if you've got a bunch of cavities and gum disease or grandma does or the daycare has or babysitters have, your child is exposed to the surrounding population. And you can't say, I mean, New York State actually had a, I wish I'd taken a picture of it. They had a poster on an underground station, on a subway station, don't kiss your baby. And I called the head of the dental, uh, New York Dentist Society that created that poster and said, how ridiculous. As a mother of five, I am going to protest that that is not only it, it's incompatible advice, it's bad, it's, it's even damaging advice because you can't bring up a child with a sterile mouth. They're going to pick up bacteria that are going to land on teeth. It's better they get healthy bacteria than don't, I don't kiss my baby, well, get me healthy. And it only takes six months of eating a delicious, uh, this xylitol, if you don't know, is just a delicious product that you know, you can have it as a mint or a piece of gum and, and it, it, it's, there's nothing bad about it. You can choose the flavor you like, or you can buy crystals. And if you just do it with crystals, a teaspoon a day, you can probably spend $14 and have enough xylitol for a year. I mean, this is not an expensive way to, to change your mouth health, but you have to do it in advance of cavities. And so if you want the ultimate prevention that's ultimate prevention. The problems come once a cavity starts. And you asked that question, Dr. Kim, how, when can you reverse a cavity? And my experience was in my own dental office in the UK when I had complete control over everything because I only cleaned the teeth of people that needed, need, need needed a cleaning. I didn't do a six month protocol cleaning just because. And when I saw that happening, I was part of the faculty dental practice at the University of Rochester. 
And I'm saying, no, I don't want my patients to have a cleaning. When did they? When does the patient have treatment before they see the doctor to do to prescribe it? And and they looked at me as if I was crazy, because taking the biofilm off your teeth, if it doesn't need to be taken off, why are we doing that? I haven't had the biofilm taken off my teeth in 45 years. It's actually protective. It, it defends your teeth from temperature, from abrasion, from erosion, having these routine cleanings. And it, Dr. Kim, you are going more and more and more often. You're stripping your mouth of its own protection. And heaven forbid you kiss somebody. Oh, she has just gotten disconnected. Uh, we're going to let her come back on because I think she just got disconnected. But there's so much richness, you guys, that like, oh. I want to share a couple of the ahas that went on for me uh, as she's coming back in. Oh, thank you. I, I'm just going to finish this one thing um, and, and let you jump right back in. But so much of what you're saying about I can't work in that institution anymore knowing what I know. And there's so many myself and many of my colleagues have found that same thing. Like when you get to the core of what's going on at the institutional level, like realizing, wait a minute, institutionalized medicine is not about supporting the health. It, it, there's actually another agenda and that that then supports the health is secondary, but it's not really primarily about supporting the health is a major, major problem. And so practicing in that model was was no longer a fit for me. And I stepped away from that. Um, and, and I'm in an independent practitioner now and it's I'll never look back. Um, so please, please go on with um, what <laughs> well, you're saying I, I here. We're in all different directions talking about that. You know, I started this xylitol company. I went into private practice with a friend of mine. And what I discovered is the difficulty of practicing prevention in private practice in America, because it is an insurance based, people wanted it that way back then, especially with children, teaching people. You know, I taught this uh, family how they could reverse this seven year old's cavities in her molar teeth, you know, and I explained and they had questions and it took half an hour or more explaining it. And then they got up and went to the front desk and said, can't we just get a filling? What, what, you know, why is this dentist busy telling us it would just, can we just get a, get a filling? And I realized then that my good intentions couldn't be used like that in America. People have been brainwashed into believing what they believe. And I needed to step aside and do this differently. And I did it initially through my xylitol business. Um, and that wasn't really as, it wasn't my plan and my mission, but now finally I'm able to let my, actually one of my daughters and a team run the, Z the xylitol business I started. And now my focus is writing books, educating, online and it's it's what I have always wanted to, to do so it's kind of a roundabout circle and um, you know it, it's hard because you see dentists can only do what they charge for and it's unfortunate um, the sealants for example if you ask a dentist why aren't you preventive they would say to you oh but I am I have a hygienist she does the cleanings and the x-rays uh, which is where they, of course, they just simply find what's wrong. They don't measure your process and progress. Yeah. And they are not actually preventing. They're not teaching you what to do. It's just, Hey, it's going to show up. Let's make sure we catch it when it does versus educating people about diet, about saliva, the acid and the pH balance, about when to drink what and when to not drink, you know, don't just sit around and sip all day. Sodas, even the most basic things that we know yes. are very, very strongly encouraging that decay are not taught at all in the dentist's office. In some, I mean, to be honest, there are some now that are, are getting there, but then again, they get bombarded by the marketing of companies, for example, the ones selling nano hydroxy appetite, sensodyne toothpaste, strong fluorides, you know, the latest organic uh, uh, essential oil rinse. I mean, which of these works? How do they work? Does it work? And these poor hygienists have so little training. So little, they're often young. They come out of hygiene school. 
And, and I can tell you a story. I, I was invited the, the year I gave my, I, I produced this book, Kiss Your Dentist Goodbye. I think it was a year later, I was invited to give a keynote address at a, a 50 year graduation ceremony of a hygiene school. And they spent the day listening to this, this how to do things. At the end of the day, I'm packing up my car and the dean of the hygiene school came out and said, oh, Dr. Ali, I'm so glad you're here. My teeth are falling apart. This is the dean of the hygiene school. So if you think dentists and hygienists know how to look after teeth, they're trained in the way they're trained, but like doctors, are they honestly able to prevent disease? I mean, some, when they're young, young men rarely have a lot of dental problems. Women, when they're pregnant, for example, often have dental problems, but that's usually when the hygienist will quit her job or, or go part-time or just be a fill-in. You want an older woman who's been pregnant several times, how is it working for her? It, it, especially if you're a woman, because baking soda, which is a commonly advised treatment or, or toothpaste or make it into a, a, a paste. If women use baking soda and peroxide, they're going to probably end up with gum recession and sensitivity very quickly. And if they keep flossing on top of that, they will probably have severe gum recession to the point that they may need graft or they'll be told they need grafting and so on. And sometimes they lose their teeth trying so hard using all these techniques that they're being told work. And I'd say from my experience, women should never use baking soda or peroxide. And of course, all the whitening products are peroxide pretty much. Wow. And you don't get told that. And you get don't get told that you know, the downsides of sealants, the downsides of fillings and crowns. Um, I think most people today have heard there are downsides of root canals. I'm not so sure that today's root canals are that bad. I think fillings, if you can reverse a filling, which you absolutely can, and it takes about six months of using the strategies I recommend to reverse a cavity so that you don't need a filling. And it takes about six years for a cavity to form this caries, this infection to burrow itself into your tooth far enough that you probably can't reverse it. But you've got about a six year window. If you think you've got a cavity starting, get on my system, take a year, go back. Chances are that cavity will have gone and your risk is minimal. If you can go back in between and just get a checkup, you might even see something on the next ray. I have something to insert here that you'll be really happy about. So right after I met Dr. Ellie, uh, I started this protocol. My teeth never felt better. Within two days, my daughter who has braces said, mom, my teeth are whiter. And they were noticeably whiter. Uh, I went on a walk with Jen, who's one of my best friends. She's a chiropractic doctor who's a very prominent leader for other chiropractors. And she and I were walking. I said, oh, you got to hear about this whole dental thing I've been doing, blah, blah, blah. Filled her in the whole thing. She's like, well, I actually just had half of my mouth uh, planar scaling where they scrape underneath the gum line to get any plaque out that's even up above where you can see. Scraped it, but it was such a lengthy process. They only did half of her mouth. She was going to go back for the other half. And I said, you know what? try this protocol because she has told me um, she has seen plaque and uh, 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 gum recession re improve. Um, she has seen cavities improve and the teeth remineralize. I bet you she's going to have something to say about this. And so sure enough, Jen spoke with Dr. Ellie. She sent her the kit and the information and I did just follow up with her. And she said, after only a, a week on the protocol, she's already seen some noticeable differences. And, and Dr. Elliot said, like, give it six solid months and go back to that dentist to see, because I would anticipate they're going to tell you like, which half did we scale? Which half did we not do? Because you're going to get improvement. And I thought it was really notable that even after just a week, she's seeing some notable improvements. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so quick. And the reason it's quick is because she's healthy she has balanced the rest of her health. And I would imagine that the people on this 
particular show have listened to you about digestive health and immune health and rest and the importance of exercise and circulation and so on. And I'd like to sort of talk about that because I think this is how it draws what you do together. Why would your digestive health be connected with your mouth health? And the connection, there are two connections. One is that if you have bad bacteria in your mouth, you are swallowing them. Every time you have a mouthful of liquid or food, what's in your mouth, planktonic bacteria and the liquid saliva are being swallowed, whether you like it or not, that's what's happening. And I believe that that is not helpful and that we will maybe eventually find IBS and some of these leaky gut issues are actually connected with the periodontal pathogens and particularly E. coli, which can get on your toothbrush if you store your toothbrush in the bathroom where a toilet is being flushed. Because oh, wait a minute. Oh, God. What? Yes. I'm sorry to tell you, but E. coli, when you flush a toilet, is in the air and hangs in the air probably for tw- even if you shut the lid and everything else oh there, is my God. Plume, there is a plume and if you keep and and I've always wanted to know why do people in lower socioeconomic status groups have more problems especially gum problems than people who live in the higher socioeconomic groups and I would say because I actually rented a house in a welfare community sort of living accommodation once for a very short period of time because it was the only house I could get the bathroom was so tiny, everybody had to use it. The only place to keep your toothbrush was right on the edge of this. Oh, we got to just go to, what do we do here? Because what we have a water closet and then the, the where we brush our teeth is outside of that. But so I bet there's still yeah. something, but I think for most people, if it's all one room, what on earth do we do? Think about where can you store your toothbrush, which could be in the bedroom or it could be outside. Where you, could you brush your teeth in the kitchen? Or if we put it in a cabinet, like put the no, toothbrushes. You want to really have air to dry. And you really want to dry your toothbrush for 24 hours. It is so important. It is such an easy fix. Have one for the morning, one for the evening. Bacteria die when they dry. So don't put it in. Yeah, I no, you can put it in Listerine peroxide, vinegar. Don't, because you will soften your toothbrush to becoming ineffective. The quickest way to get gum disease is to have a super soft toothbrush that is impotent, that cannot massage your gums. Because if you want your gums to regrow, you need them to be stimulated. You need to stimulate stem stem cells. Yeah, I taught even my five-year-old to brush on the gum, up above the gum line to stimulate the gums. And he was super excited about learning that he told all his friends. Well, you really need to teach kids as their permanent teeth are coming in. When kids have baby teeth, they never get gum disease or periodontal disease. Baby teeth are different. And I think you should make brushing fun for kids. You should focus on the xylitol, which will get rid of the plaque, as we were saying. Uh, But once their permanent teeth come in, they are at risk, even from six years old, for gum disease, especially if they end up in braces or mouth breathers or stressed for some reason or uh, special needs kids in particular may have. I had a Down syndrome child her front teeth are pushed by the tongue forward. So brushing at the gum level was very difficult. And by the time she got to be a young adult, she had serious periodontal disease uh, that was loosening her four front teeth. Now, the good end of that story is I, her mother caught it in time. She was being told to have the teeth taken out, that they were bone loss and gum loss. We reversed it. And now it's 11 years later and this child has a perfect mouth again. So right. we have a bunch of questions. I want to go ahead. Uh, capture here. Really good. Good. So someone is asking, "What about oil pulling?" And I know what I've learned. And I do. I do want to just insert this, and we can go more into the fluoride thing later. Um, when you had told me to start using topical fluoride, I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" But because I'd already been learning from you, I'd seen the results, um, and I just kind of got a gist of who you are and that you were kind of smart on this. I was like, "You know what?" I'm going to look into this. I'm going to investigate this. And when you told me about, um, hey, Kim, you wouldn't drink chlorine. Yeah, of course I wouldn't drink chlorine. Well, what about 
chloride, you know, we're all eating this all day long because sodium chloride is table salt. It's in every food. And, uh, but that's the same, you know, element just in a different compound. And so, yes, fluoride, it's the same thing. Do you have fluorite? Do you have fluoride? Do you, what do you actually stand? Stannous fluoride is a totally different compound. We do not have fluoride ingested by anyone in our home and we've got a whole house filter. There's no way I would want knowing what I know now, to have them ingest with the neurotoxicity decrease in IQ that we know happens, especially with children. Um, so we're we're going to talk about that and what the benefit of this is. But oil pulling, I'd heard a lot about in the past. I had personally tried it. I never had any kind of results like what I've had using your method. But do you want to insert and speak on this at all? Quickly, I mean, I'm not against oil pulling. I, I, I My parents used to live in India, which is where oil pulling with the Ayurvedic idea. It was not coconut oil. I'm not convinced coconut oil is the one to use. I'd use sesame oil, high grade, high lignin sesame oil if I was doing it. I think it can get rid of disease. If you have periodontal disease or you have bleeding gums and you are somewhere where I think that the first mouth rinse in my system is better because it turns to oxygen and does, does it differently. But I think if you want to just like suffocate those disease bacteria, that's kind of how I look at oil pulling working. It suffocates them. So if you had a wisdom tooth that was bothering you and you're scaling the Himalayas, get some sesame oil, you know, do some oil pulling and you'd probably get that to subside in that situation because you can't get a mouth rinse from Walgreens. But, you know, I think there's an easier, better or as good way to get rid of disease. Now, the problem with oil pulling, it doesn't remineralize teeth. I don't believe that it can get in to help deep cavities in the same way that the products do that I recommend. I think it's too thick. The consistency isn't the same, that the technique, the philosophy, it's sort of a, just a simply suffocating bacteria okay. kind of philosophy. And I think there's a place for that in some circumstances. So I'm okay. not horribly offended by it, but I just think if you've got a cavity, I would use my system first, get rid of the cavity. And then if you want to decide to go back to doing oil pulling because you like the way it feels, go ahead. I, I had a husband who did it for years and it's pretty gross because there's no way to put the oil. And, you know. uh, okay. Do you have anything to say about clenching or grinding? This is yes. something that I had issues with back in college and uh, I'd be interested in your take. Yeah, we all do. Everybody grinds their teeth. Teeth were made for chewing and grinding and biting. The What a dentist does when he says you're damaging your teeth, he's seeing these ab abrasion uh, facets. These are little worn down areas on your teeth. And that is because your enamel is soft. Something is wrong something is wrong. The symptom is this facet. The symptom is you're wearing away your teeth. The reason we have to look for, I wore mine away when I was at dental school because I was on a grapefruit diet. This was the latest thing then. We ate grapefruits and I used to eat them right before I went to bed at night. Couldn't oh, have been wow. worse. I ended up with an, a, what they would today call an abfraction groove or some people are blamed for brushing their teeth wrong. It's, it's all because of acidity, basically fracturing the little crystals of your tooth enamel. And then they break off almost like flaky dry skin. And you're left with either a groove at the gum line, uh, and it can be in the front or, or usually a, a, a row by your back molar teeth. Mine are still there. Uh, once I learned how to deal with them, I never got them filled. They never got any worse. But you do have to figure out what's the damage being done. Why is it there? It could be stress because when you're stressed, your own saliva, the liquid that we're saying needs to heal your teeth, can get out of balance. It can become acidic. And the right way around that is to use my complete mouth care system without going through all the details my complete mouth care system is designed to take people who are at high risk, which would be people with acidic mouths for some reason, they're stressed, they're pregnant, they're women at some hormonal misadventure stage, uh, they're taking some kind of medication that dries their mouth, they've got allergies that dries their mouth, they've got sinus blockage that dries their mouth, they've got a shape of a mouth that they mouth breathe. These are the high risk people who will get 
clenching and grinding damage. The problem with putting in a night guard, the reason I wouldn't have a night guard, never did, is because I don't want plastic sitting in my mouth for so long, every day, all day. I mean, I am a truly health conscious person. I try to avoid plastics, BPA, which is why I don't recommend sealants and fillings. And, and I don't care if it's a white filling or a silver filling, they're all toxic in some way. I mean, you don't want a filling. I mean, if you can get a pristine tooth back again, do it. That's why if you've had a filling, you've had it. We can't undo it. And it's not the end of the world, but it's the same thing with this night grinding. Everybody today is being sold a 600 to $800 night guard without looking at why do I have that damage? And, and that's what I would say to you to do. Try and figure out why do you have an acidic mouth? What's the reason? Okay. Um, someone is asking about uh, UK, that, that ACT is not available in UK. And where would they be able to get the products? I, I, maybe we can talk yes. a little bit about yes. the system quickly, quickly and what you're recommending people use. Yes. The, 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 I have a good school friend. I was at Cheltenham and my, I was at boarding school. And my best friend at boarding school, of course, was immediately put on the program as soon as I had it developed. And Helen's been using this now for 40 years plus, and she has used the Ultradex, is the equivalent of the closest, uh, Oral-B123, if you can't get the Crest, particular kind of Crest that I recommend. Don't get the Pro Health. It's the wrong fluoride. It's toxic. Don't do it. Make sure it's the right Crest. And my website uh, on Dr. Ellie, I have pictures and links for Amazon. Yeah, I try to help everyone. I'm going to have a page for UK. But um, Fluorogard is the name of the act, equivalent, almost equivalent, not exactly equivalent, but it does work. And then the Xylitol products, the equivalent for Zellies in UK, currently is Pepper Smith. And a dentist friend of mine who actually works in, the, in, the, in Eastbourne, where I was first a dentist, he's developed a Dr. Hef. Uh, Zalatol mint. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And someone was asking about the the fluoride. So the topical fluoride is not the same as ingesting, which is toxic. And there are numerous studies demonstrating the neurotoxicity, the development developmental problems, decrease in IQ. I, I, this is not an arguable thing with the data. Well, um, in in a, you have to look at age if you're under six all fluoride should be absolutely limited. I used to make baby formula with Avion water for my kids to make absolutely certain there was no fluoride in it. But you've got to be careful because some baby formulas have fluoride in and tea has fluoride in it naturally. And if you, you know, there are naturally occurring spring waters from Colorado that have naturally occurring fluoride in them because it's in the soil. So I don't think some fluoride in small quantities, as long as you're cognizant, if you're, you know, you just got to be aware that you're not overdoing it. If you're drinking a lot of tea, especially iced tea, be aware, look it up, figure out how much fluoride are you consuming every day? Because you will be, it's, it, you know, but again, I'm talking topical and you're absolutely right, Dr. Kim, there's a big difference between putting something that I believe is totally stable on your teeth for two minutes a day as a, a rinse and a toothpaste and you're spitting it out, you're spitting it out that, and you could say, what well, does it absorb? You have another 23 hours and 50, whatever, seven, <laughs> six minutes a day to detox it, to detox this. If you have a worry about thyroid, um, you know, maybe discuss it. You could supplement in some way, but it, if you've got cavities, you have a need for fillings, you need night guards, and this is your solution to avoid it, there's this risk balance. I mean, I know people who are avoiding fluoride, they have cracks in their teeth, they're getting root canals, they're getting crowns, they're wearing night guards. And I'm going, this doesn't make sense. It, it just doesn't make sense. They're not seeing the dangers in the consequences. If you are fine, you're fine. But uh, if you're at risk, you, this is a solution to that risk.
Mm-hmm. And so what she's talking about is topical fluoride. They're using topically on the teeth as a rinse. It is not being ingested. It is a sodium fluoride rinse, not a stannous fluoride. Um, do you want to speak a little bit? And I know we touched on this already, not soaking your toothbrush. I never really heard about this before. So I wasn't aware so many people were doing it. But when you're soaking your toothbrush, it's actually deteriorating the fibers and their ability to do their job well. Um, And it's also not allowing that toothbrush to air out, dry out and kill off all the bacteria. So yeah, now I've used an AM, my kids too, and a PM toothbrush. So it's got that full 24 hours, just basic, basic things, not recolonizing your mouth as you're attempting to get rid of all the bad bacteria and promote the healthy bacteria. You do not want an aseptic mouth. You want just like the gut when you, when you wipe it away with all the antibiotics, you're, you're in way worse health. Um, from a gut standpoint and same for your mouth. You want to actually have a lot of good bacteria in your mouth that help you stay healthy and, and digest your food. And, uh, and, and actually maybe on, on that, I can just add, you know, I am aware of healthy bacteria. When I wrote my last book, Mouth Care Comes Clean, it was after the Human Microbiome Project that had found up to 900 kinds of healthy bacteria in a healthy mouth, which was news to the dental world, which had always looked at all mouths of full plaque. That's why we have to do these things. People in the xylitol world have known because of these studies in the 70s that by changing around the bacteria, we didn't really know exactly how you promote good bacteria. And so we had never really bought into this idea of stripping the mouth of all bacteria. Hydrogen peroxide and baking soda, they strip your teeth of biofilm by dissolving the protein structure of biofilm. And that's why I wouldn't put my toothbrush in hydrogen peroxide because there would probably be some left on the brush. And, you know, you don't want to get rid of your biofilm. You want to develop healthy biofilm. The other thing is there's a lot of misconception about mouthwashes are bad for you. You may have been aware that there was a whole thing about nitric oxide. I've tested my nitric oxide. This is completely false information. You don't kill the good bacteria with Listerine. You don't, it, 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 there's so much to say, but just take it from me. I've had my mouth tested by somebody who didn't believe that I had no periodontal pathogens at my age, having not had a cleaning all those years. And not only did he find that I didn't have any bad bacteria, but I had the widest diversity of good bacteria he had ever tested. So much so he wanted to test my children and their spouses to see how far did the good bacteria actually travel in our family. And it's a pretty wild, I'd like to do more studies of that, but again, where do you get funding? Because it doesn't help anybody. <laughs> In this current system, that's just not what it's about, right? So I'm, I'm glad you've been independent and, and venturing out. And like you said, emptying your 401k to invest in something you believe in. I, I had a very similar path. Um, someone's asking about natural tooth whitening. And I want to state how much my teeth are so much whiter. They, they were already pretty good. Uh, but I never have felt like I need to brighten them since using the xylitol. And my my daughter, within two days of the system, has these braces on and she's like, Oh, can I whiten my teeth? After two days of the system, she's like, mom, my teeth are so white. Yes. So this is, yes. you know, really how it works is that remineralization. It is. Well, the teeth are not white. This is a marketing ploy that was uh, brilliant. I hope the person who came up with it has been compensated adequately because teeth are glass. They're the same color as the glass in your lenses or in your window and they're made out of those same crystals. The how a tooth appears depends on the smoothness of the crystals, the complexity of the crystals, in other words, how many minerals are in there, and how little water is between each of these crystals. The design is unbelievable and extraordinary if you look under a high-powered lens at the structure of enamel. What is to know is that as this light bounces off your teeth, if your teeth are smooth and well mineralized, the viewer is going to notice them as white. If you go under a a 
the fluorescent light in a dental office or the wrong lighting in your bathroom, you may not think your teeth look that white because that's the reflection is different with different lights, like a diamond. You know, if you take your teeth to candlelight or you take them out in the sunshine and smile into a mirror, that's how to see the real color of your teeth. And don't get distressed. You know, people get look in the bathroom mirror and they've just rinsed with did the green come into my teeth? Don't do that. That's that's ridiculous. Take your mirror, go outside, look at your tooth color, and realize that the more porous your teeth are, the more the light is absorbed and they'll look yellower, which is why a tooth of a seven-year-old coming into the mouth will always, new teeth are not fully mineralized as they erupt. And the most joy I've had, I've got eight grandchildren who are now between eight and 15, as their new teeth came in and they looked yellow because they were under mineralized, they're, they're not fully matured. Within six months, if you use my complete mouth care system for your children and all these techniques, I mean, now as 15 year olds and 14 year olds, I'm looking at their teeth and I am so proud of all these grandchildren without a cavity between them and just these super white, super gorgeous looking teeth. And my own children with a similar experiment um, throughout, I, I won't go through all the stories of them, but that's how I learned a lot about whitening teeth. You just do it by strengthening them. Don't do it with peroxides that, especially if you have silver fillings in your mouth, peroxide will pull mercury out of your silver fillings, just an FYI, just in case you're thinking you're not going to listen to me. Please don't do peroxide or whitening things if you have silver fillings in your mouth. All right. We have um, one, we just have a couple more minutes. I know there's a lot of okay. questions here, you guys, if you want to touch really quick on powered toothbrush versus regular. And then I just want to um, complete with last thoughts you want to have since we okay. you know you have like well, a wealth of information to share. Very, very difficult to know about good toothbrushes and not. I recommend one with a really dense bristle head two lengths of bristles. I do like these flossing bristles that some of these new toothbrushes have because you can massage. And the point of gum brushing is to massage your gums to get new angiogenesis, new stem cells, to regrow your gums every day. My gums are at the same level they were when I was 21 years old. And that's a wow. huge asset yeah. when you are aging in your 70s and your gums still look good. It's, it's really a, a terrific thing. So I would say to you, if you love your, you've just invested in a very expensive power toothbrush, get yourself one of the brushes that I recommend, a, a decent, big headed, thick, dense bristle, bristle like this. I have on my website uh, suggestions and compare it. Do the manual brush at night using the techniques that I recommend for gum massage, which again, you'll find on my website and compare it with doing what your toothbrush company or your dentist or your hygienist has told you to do with your power brush. I don't think yet I've found anyone who stayed with a power brush. Once you have found a good toothbrush and you've learned to use it, and that was one of the things in my dental office, I would put somebody with a mirror and then I would brush their teeth all the way around, inside, outside, and inevitably they would say, ah, oh, I've never felt my mouth so clean. It is critical to learn how to effectively brush your teeth. And, and I'm not being, you know, condescending here, but it is difficult to do. Thank you. I think that's the answer I would say. And it's, it's difficult to know a good toothbrush. I took two years of a study I did myself giving people, do you like this brush or this brush, this brush or this brush, and recording all, it was 70 people and recording the outcome and ending up, actually I made a toothbrush, but this now is not mine. It's it's another one that's very similar. Okay. People can find her at drelly.com. I know there's a lot of questions about remineralization. That's really where the xylitol comes in. In fact, when I first started doing the system, uh, I wasn't focusing so much on the xylitol. So it was after a couple of weeks, I was like, oh, we got to kick this up. And it was massive. Like my teeth are stronger. They're whiter. Um, 
I feel they feel cleaner. So, you know, this is a, a major, major shift for me, for my family. I know there are lots and lots of questions people have. Her book is excellent. Mouth care comes clean. And drelly.com is where you can go for more education to look at what is the complete mouth care system. And then I went to the drugstore and bought these products that I never thought I would be using, but that's what I've learned. Um, and where I've actually bought a whole bunch of xylitol um, gummies and mints and things like that. Um, I do use them before bed and I have my kids use them before bed because they've been shown to strengthen and remineralize the teeth. So it's like, they think they're getting a candy before bed. My five-year-old does anyway. Uh, but this has really, really uh, improved uh, our health and seeing the difference. So- And again, it's any- not- it's not the xylitol as much as the way xylitol operates. Xylitol feeds the good bacteria, makes plaque slippery, and it stimulates a flow of your own saliva. So back again, if you have healthy digestion and healthy immune system, they're coming out. Your saliva is going to be healthier because you're healthier. And then because you're allowing your saliva to interact with your mouth during the night and during the day and between meals, your gut's going to be healthier. So it's it's this evaporation chart almost of our bodies. That's what's so cool. The mouth connects your gut with your circulation, with your hormones, with everything. And uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. You can go to Dr. Ellie Phillips for more information, videos, education, or just like the list of what to get or to order the xylitol. Um, thank you guys for being here. I'm at drkimd.com. And the whole premise of this work is you are a creator. Your body can heal itself. You can go to drkimd.com for more resources in mind-body healing to read the mind-body toolkit or begin a program in mind-body medicine to really activate your own creative power. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Dr. Ellie Phillips will be here every week for Mind Body TV at 11 a.m. Mountain Time on Wednesday. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.